Hello, welcome to the video series on project planning and controlling with Microsoft Project. My name is Jacques Alexis, I'm a FATSI here in the leadership and project management domain in CPS. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to report progress on your project and how to perform a variance analysis. So to report progress on your project, it means that at, uh, you are at a point where some time of your project has elapsed and your team has been working on some project deliverables. And it is common practice or best practices. Uh, one of the best practices in project management is actually to provide um, progress update to the project manager to explain where you are on the task to which you are assigned. So what do we need uh, in order for the, uh, to do that properly? First, we need to have um, a, a good baseline. So uh, for um, a, a good baseline means that um, all uh, project activities and work packages have resource uh, assignment. Uh, it means that um, there is a, a way to do that. For example, if you take a look at resource usage here, you can see uh, where you need uh, um, assignment. Um, on the owner side, you should only see milestones uh, activities or milestones, really, not real activities or what we call milestones tasks. So a milestone is a schedule marker. It's not a real activity. You do not assign resources. And we, as we said before, they do have zero duration. So this is uh, actually pretty good. So I am going to take a look at my resource sheet here. I see I do not have any of our locations. So that's great. If I take a look at my work resources here, I don't see any of our location, so that's fine. Uh, so another thing I need to make sure of is to look at the project baseline itself. So let's me take a look at project information, statistics, and take a look at the baseline. So you can see here, I do not have a baseline, so I can't really report progress in a form for me to, to perform variance analysis. I need to have a baseline because the baseline will serve as standard to which I will compare my performance uh, later. So I need to have a baseline. Uh, you can't perform variance analysis without a baseline. So what I'm going to do, since this is a good plan, uh, I'm going to assume everything's okay here, and I'm going to set a baseline. I set a baseline for the uh, entire project, as you can see here in this dialog box, and I click okay. So now I do have a baseline, So uh, and I don't have it of allocation. So another thing that I need in my plan before I set the baseline is to make sure that I have contingency reserve. In another video, I explained how a project budget or project plan without contingency um, was a bad plan. So here, as you can see, I do have contingency reserve. So that's uh, perfect. So the next thing to do is to report uh, progress. Now, um, team members, you know, sent information. Now I'm going to report the progress. So I'm going to do that in the Gantt chart view with the entry table. So practically, if you take a look at my screen here, you, you see I have some um, project activities and variables that were scheduled for um, so, uh, last year and created um, at the start of this year. And I need to report that all these activities were actually completed. So from all the way to um, June, um, actually, let's say June, um, 
uh, okay, all the way to here to uh, detail design, all completed, right? Um, so click on task and in the schedule group here, you can report uh, tasks that are, you know, 25% complete, 50% uh, complete, 75% complete, and 100% complete. Here, those tasks are 100% complete. So when you do that, you're going to have a check mark here. So um, as you, um, the check mark here means that they are 100% complete. So for the other activities, the construction activities, I'm going to select all of them here. As you can see, there are things that are far ahead. That's not going to be um, uh, that I actually, um, that's not scheduled to start in uh, until the future. So I can say these things, um, let's select from uh, item 35 here up until 39 and say um, that they are 100% complete. These are 100% complete. And what about the remaining items, your project, if you want, you can select them, you can say so far, it's looked like that they are all on track. And actually there is a mark on track button here uh, in the schedule group. So click on that and you say that they are on track. Things that are, were supposed to be completed, they, they completed. You can see that, that's perfect. So now that you report progress in your project, you can also uh, tell the software how you completed those tasks. Did you complete them ahead of time or late or just on time? So if you, you want to take a look at um, a table showing that information, you can take a look at um, the variance table. So click on view, and click on variance. So that show, um, shows you the, the variance table. So you have the, the start variance here, as you can see, you didn't report a start variance, you didn't report a finish variance, but this is something you can do. What you have here, you have the plan start dates for these project uh, deliverables and activities and this finish uh, plan finish date for that. So they call them baseline finish uh, and, and, and baseline start. So what you can do is to tell the software whether there was a difference between the finish or the, um, the plan finish and the actual finish. So to do that, I'm going to insert a colon here. I right click and, uh, on the header. And I click insert and I'm going to type actual finish. All right. So actual finish. Um, uh, as you can see here, uh, for the most part, uh, for things that um, uh, actually mark, mark as finish, you have a date in the actual finish, but for things that you didn't actually even start yet, you don't have anything that says NA, not applicable. So I'm going to tell the software, how did I complete some of these activities? Uh, you can, you know, for example, create project charter was planned to finish that's the baseline finish. Um, so that's your baseline finish here, um, 714. Um, but um, actually we finish a little bit earlier than this. Uh, if you want to tell the software that, uh, now we're talking about actual finish, right? So, um, I'm looking for this task, the create project charter, not the summarizers, this one. So instead of 714, we did actually finish um, two days earlier, uh, 712. And same thing here for uh, this task, 721st, we did finish on 
716. And um, the high-level planning was planned to finish on 812. Uh, so I'm telling the software the actual date that I finish that um, differ from my plan finished it, my baseline. So here, this was for 12, um, 812, and we finish a week earlier. So that's called um, a, a gap, a, a discrepancy between what you plan and what you actually. This means for, uh, the team was actually um, very effective and efficient in terms of uh, the utilizations of the time, at least in project planning and project initiations. And we can actually report for all the um, activities here. Uh, uh, for example, I can report for identifications of potential sites, I think that's that's what this task is. Uh, it 30, so I'm gonna say it finished a week earlier. So as you can see here, I'm reporting a lot of variances um, as they occurred. And you can go and do that for all completed tasks. So you can do that only for completed tasks. That's when it's going to make a difference. So when you finish doing that, um, you can take a look at where you 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 have variances. Uh, there are many many tools to report variances on your project, but uh, here I'm going to talk about uh, four key indicators from a project management tool called Earn Value Management (EVM) or Earn Value Analysis (EVA). So EVM is a uh, monitoring and controlling tool that we use in project management to monitor project progress. So what I'm going to look here, I'm going to switch from the variance table to the earn value table to show you what you see. So let, click on table here and look for uh, more tables and look for earn value table. So if you type E, for example, it take, take, take you to the earn value table and click apply. There you go. That's your end value table. So for this project, the um, CESP plant, um, we're going to look at um, um, the, the, the cost variance, CV, the schedule variance, SV, and the cost performance index, SPI, and the schedule performance index, um, SPI. So I don't see the, um, the cost performance index here. So I'm going to do, I'm going to insert it, uh, insert and um, type SPI. Uh, this is uh, SPI, just click on it or press enter. Right. Um, that's pretty good. 1.25. And you have uh, actually a cost variance of uh, $70,000. And it is a positive variance, which is a good thing. It means that the project is actually $70,000 under budget. That's what you're looking for. So you don't have any uh, shade of variance. Actually, we completed a lot of um, uh, the, the activities um, ahead of time. They were planning uh, and project initiation activities. There were not enough uh, to uh, put us uh, ahead of schedule, but uh, we're going to insert SPI here to see what we have uh, here, right? So as you can see, we don't have a monetary amount here for the for SPI, um, for, C, um, for SV, for the schedule values, but do, we do have a point, a 1.17 uh, SPI value. Uh, for the entire for the entire project for the entire project. So, what does this mean uh, exactly? This means that in terms of monetary value, there is there isn't a, a schedule variance to report, but uh, the, the project is you can say the project is slightly uh, um, ahead of schedule uh, in terms of um, index analysis because an index higher than one is 
a good sign that um, your team is using time efficiently. Uh, but the thing about SPI is that you need N N value indicators. You you need um, a, a good portion. You, you could you need um, a significant amount of data to make it happen. And according to research, a quarter of your project time should have. Um, been elapsed for your va and value indicators to make sense. And SPI is um, problematic because at the end of the project, whether you late or on time, SPI will converge to one. So for this analysis, we're going to um, take a look at the cost variance and the um, cost performance index uh, to uh, as performance indicators. Now, here we're talking about uh, teams' uh, efficiency in terms of how they're using money and time. So we already said that we have we are seventy thousand dollars under budget, and as you can see here, we are um, earning, uh, as you can see, a dollar twenty-five for every dollar we spent uh, in the project so far. So that's. Uh, um, one way to interpret uh, the uh, cost performance index. So that's going to be all. Now remember, uh, these indicators, they do not tell you what's going to happen in your project at the end. So we're going to talk about um, forecast indicators in a different video. But what you need to remember is that SV, the shade of variance, SPI, the shade of performance index, uh, CV, the cost variance, and CPI, the cost performance index, they measure past performance, not future performance. They take a look at what you've done so far and how you've done it, how uh, have you done it uh, uh, efficiently. So that's what you're looking at. Now, that's uh, enough for this uh, video. That's going to be all. Um, watch for the next video on project planning and controlling with Microsoft Project. Thank you for watching.